My salutations to Sri Sadguru Yogi Narayana Thafiya. Satcharitra of Sri Sadguru Yogi Narayana Thafiya of Kaiwara. Chapter 8, Part 1. Each day, with the demands from the money lenders, they visited his house early so as not to miss him. In fact, all the Jews have been settled. So Narayanapa was puzzled about their visits. I inquired with one of them. He got to know that his wife also borrowed money on his behalf. When Narayanapa asked his wife, she said, where else have all these household things come from? Of course, it was borrowed from lenders. The next day, the most ignoble thing ever happened in market life. It was the darkest day of his life. The man who engineered it was, of course, the wicked coroner Malaya. We know that when he paid off the loans, Narayanapa was not prudent enough to take back the promissory note from the financiers. He took their honesty for granted. Malaya now goaded them into demanding a fresh repayment from Narayanapa on the basis of the documents in their possession. They surrounded him in the street, waved the documents in his face, and demanded full repayment right then and there. He was under siege. When he protested, there ensued arguments, and there were throngs of townsfolk thirsting for amusement. The dispute was finally referred to Coronel Malaya for justice. But how could Narayanapa get justice when the dispute was the doing of Koranom? Malaya saw an opportunity at hand to take revenge. He was bubbling over with covert satisfaction. Narayanapa was crestfallen. All the same, he pulled himself together and asked Malaya to hear his side of the dispute in the presence of the important people of the village. He appealed to Koranom. Oh, Malaya. First of all, these loans were not taken by me but by my wife. In any case, I know she has not borrowed as much as these documents say. They are manipulated papers. What is more, I have always repaid my loans in full within the stipulated period. It was, of course, my mistake not to have claimed the papers back immediately. I took their professional integrity for granted and thought they would not stoop so low as to double-cross me. At all events, a loan is a loan, whether taken by me or my wife. Now, all I request of you is some time to arrange repayment of these dues. But it all fell on deaf ears, Koranon Malaya was anything but sympathetic. What do you think this is, my man? A religious prayer hall? No, it's a far cry from it. This is the village court. Your precepts are relevant in spiritual gatherings, you can say anything there. But here, in court, everything goes by material evidence and witnesses. If you say that the documents are fake, you will go to prison. If you are unwilling to pay up, you sure belong in hell. Now that I have pronounced my decision, you bow down at their feet and express your apology, and then clear their dues in four days. There, sir, you have held me accountable for the money I never borrowed. I am now penniless and cannot see how to clear the dues in four days. Please grant me a month's time, and I will pay off all the dues. The pleading fell on deaf ears in wicked Malaya. He demanded, why do you need so long? The townsfolk say that you are an ardent devotee of Sri Amora Narayana Swami and that he expresses himself through your words of mouth. 
I'm sure they are not foolish. You seem to be the favorite of Sri Lakshmi, the goddess who can grant wealth even to the affluent Kubera. She will take good care of you, won't she? The ridicule cut him to the quick. The wicked tail bearers gathered their held their sides and clapped their appreciation. They were, of course, greatly amused at his discomfiture. Narayanapa was numb with mortification. He could not utter anything. Tang his silence for consent, Malaya finalized his judgment. As pronounced already, you must pay up in four days. Otherwise, your house will be confiscated and you will be expelled from the village. That is final. With these words, the coronom gave a nasty twirl to his moustache, rose from his chair with some arrogance, and left the scene chomping on the thambula in his mouth. Narayanapa was paralyzed with shame. He uttered his silent prayers to entrust everything to the divine care of Amora Narayana Swami and slumped helplessly on the street. All the people left he was now alone, how could he face anyone hereafter when it was dark and silent throughout? He slowly drifted home. After all, he could not cut himself free from his parental attachment to his children. He got home all right, but found nothing but solace. The response from the devout wife, who was supposed to be considerate and comforting, actually aggravated his grief and humiliation. My man, look at what you have done. You know that this mockery of your business is unable to afford a meal for your loved ones, don't you? They are never properly dressed. Is this your idea of a decent life, or, worse, a life at all? Whatever money was invested in this business has simply vanished into thin air. How often do you think you have borrowed money for it? The investment is not earned back, let alone profit. My repeated advice has finally earned me the title of being a brash, ill-tempered woman, but you have not improved your attitude. The family is now neck deep in the mud hole of beggars. This is the necessary result of your neglect of the family and your foolish rituals in the name of devotion. Did you ever notice how our neighbors take care of themselves? She was wailing and inconsolable. Narayanapa was, of course, aware. He was upset over her real misery. He confessed, yes, of course. You have told the absolute truth. As the head of the house, I have the implicit duty to look after my wife and children. But you have always been a considerate wife, and it is actually you who are resourceful in running the house. With these words of appreciation, he tried to console her. While they were engaged in this exchange, the children woke up one after another. They said to their father, we are feeling dizzy. Yesterday, we had at least some gruel, today, nothing. We cannot stand these pangs of hunger. They were crying. Narayanapa was distressed by their suffering. It was heartbreaking. He was flustered and at a loss. Oh my, where do I go at this hour of the night? What can I get to pacify the hunger of these little ones? He cursed himself for his utter helplessness. Still worse, the daughter said, Father, don't mind having to go hungry. I can go without food, but I am unable to step out for anything. She pointed at her clothes, which were totally worn out. I am ashamed to go out in these shelf-revealing, tattered clothes. 
I am like a stray orphan, you see.